Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Perisa, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to register your device via ICG. The reasons why you want to register your device not by using the UMS itself but via the Agile Cloud Gateway is multiple. First, you might want to do that from home because you have sent out a um, factory resetted UD pocket just because of data privacy and in general security didn't want to put any kind of configuration on the stick when it's on the way to the end user. Um, there the user would boot from it and would start the first one with that and enter some credentials. That's something that we'll cover today. Um, soft migration too, so um, think about uh, having people who are starting working from home um, because they didn't was were used to um, teleworker fast switching. So if you move between company and the outside world, like moving or traveling around or working from from home, uh, you might have situations where you want to remove that configuration, so the ICG registration, if you are not on the road anymore. Um, in the same end, if you want to move quickly from the office to your home and you want to deploy that configuration to thousands of users, you don't want to send out thousands of different codes to thousands different people and might have issues when people are trying to enter that code into the ICG running with that. So we'll cover today a way to uh, mass registrate devices. And basically, if we think about going to the toy workers, we are now thinking of going back to the offices and there you might want to mass remove the SEG configuration from your device because you don't want that your users are able to use it anymore from home. That's basically something that is available also from the command line, but also from the GUI. And we will see some limitations there. Like on every tutorial, we are looking at the universal management suite, also known as UMS. But just quite briefly, because the ICG registration process is taking over mostly on the endpoint itself. So let me just double check that the gateway is connected and we are good to go. So now let's switch to the endpoint directly and since the device were not registered to my UMS before, I'm just going through the first one wizard like usual. So basically that's one of the first steps I would definitely recommend to do is to check your definite time zone and continent because the time itself is really important to get the device registered to ICG. That's the reason why, besides checking the time here, I'm mostly recommending to use a public NTP server like the pool.ntp.org or whatever you prefer. So now we are coming to the Cloud Gateway Agent Setup. There, you just have to enter your address and go to login. If you would have a safe signed certificate, so created by the UMS and not by a public certificate authority, you would in addition have to enter the certificate fingerprint that you received by your admin. But now let's go directly into the password mode and check if the connection is getting configured like expected. The device is now registering through the ICG into our UMS. So after a couple of seconds, we should get a configuration assigned. Since the language is already in French, which was part of a demo I had for a German part of Switzerland, that looks pretty good, I would say. And yes, I want to apply my changes now. So now the configuration is applied like you would already have seen it in all the demos. But now we are looking at additional features like since we covered the first one visit for the registration process. And by the way, you would have exactly the same in the start menu when choosing the ICG setup again. So now we will cover another approach. So let me just first refresh my device and now searching for the virtual machine we are looking at. Here we go. So that's basically what I wanted to see. So we are good. 
But let's imagine now that this device has to come back into the company. So I would like to remove my ICG configuration that I made locally. Right-clicking on the device, ICG configuration, remove ICG configurations. Oh, that's a pity. So we have apparently a device which is not supporting this feature. So how can I remove that configuration? The easiest way is to add a terminal session and double check how it works on the local side. So now that we're in the terminal, let me double check our main configuration folder, which is WFS, and check the content. What we see here is we have an ICG cert.cft, an ICG.cfg, and an ICG checksums. So that's basically the configuration that the device is holding locally. What you could do is, is removing that configuration by hand. And the last one, reboot the device, and the device should then be outside of your ICG configuration, so be careful with that steps. So now let's register the device and put it in a more readable language for most of our audience. So I'm just scanning in my local network for the little machine, and move the device back into my structure because now we are seeing that the device is not connected via ICG anymore which is exactly what we wanted to do by deleting this local configuration. Just to be clear it's not the easiest way to do that but if you want to test something locally it's pretty handy. So the next thing is now that we deleted it might want to resend that configuration back to the endpoint. In the past, you had to use a script for that. In the meantime, you can just use the same configuration menu. In that case, I have a valid EMP, so I can set select ICG and send the configuration. So basically, the device should, in a couple of seconds, get a notification that the device is successfully connected. And if I'm now checking again by refreshing my view, my default directory will apply it again. This device, if it's going into an ICG connection, will be moved automatically in a specific subfolder, which I will disable right now because we don't need it anymore. So here we go. Now go back to my endpoint and move it again into my directory folder. So I can just use the cut and paste function, which is sometimes more easy to use. Okay, that's the second approach to register a device into the ICG UMS concept. Uh, I want to cover a last one which might help you if it comes to another script that we have on our GitHub uh, which is a mass deployment of your ICG configuration if you're not able to use the uh, context menu just as I just showed you. So basically if you go back to your endpoint and create a terminal session you can re-register the device manually by issuing some commands in the command line. Basically, we are doing the same like on the first approach. So we will delete now all the ICG configuration files before issuing the command.
and we are good. So the command that we are using in the GitHub script and in all the mass deployment scripts that you might have seen on the Azure community is icg-config. This binary is included in the beginning. In some versions, it wasn't there anymore, um, but in our case, it's there. So at least on L11 or 5, an actual version, you can use that tool. And just by pushing enter, it will show you the command and the parameter it's expecting. So now back again, but let's push some content into it. So icg minus my sir. And now I need my one time. In that case, it's more multiple time password that I will delete afterwards. It's this one. And since I'm still using a public certificate and not a self-signed one from the ICG, I don't have to enter the certificate fingerprint. And since I'm not using a specific UMS structure tag because it's just for a demo, I will pass that one. If I would like to use it, I just add minus T and then the UMS structure tag, which will be in my case demo. Then we stay on that one and enter. And now the device should recreate the SCG config and SCG cert, so the configuration themselves. So the device should now still be manageable via our UMS and via ICG. So let's refresh and let's now start a remote shadowing session in direction of the endpoint. Enter my high security password and here we go. So just in case uh, the ICG minus config tool is pretty powerful, so use it with caution. You cannot break really something, but if you have an existing configuration, you might overwrite in that case, so be careful on that one. And that's more or less what I wanted to show you on the configuration step. So just keep in mind, we have the first run wizard, we have the ICG agent setup, which is available in the start menu under system, which will cover exactly the same procedure like in the first run wizard. Then we have the ability to send the SG configuration via the context menu, uh, which is more or less the replacement for the old way to use the ICG minus config tool. But in some cases, if you want to mass deploy it to thousands of devices, creating a profile sometimes is more handy because you want to use different human structure text or whatever, that would be the next step. And like I said, we can remove the SG configurations also from the device via the context menu or via the command line with the RM comments you have seen. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.